the original problem was um, the one that's in your notes. Maybe I should uh, take a picture of it. Is there a way for me to do that? Why double prime equals x plus y minus one? So there's the problem. I just threw it in the video so we could see it. It's this, uh, the one that we got written right up here at the top. Y double prime is equal to X plus Y minus Y squared. Y of zero equals negative one and Y prime of zero is equal to one. Now, once I've converted it into my system, I have what's down here. And then again, my initial conditions are that Y at zero is negative one and Y at so u at zero would be this one, okay? So I'm going to get rid of that, go back to here. Let's pick an h, a step size, maybe 0.1. So I'm going to be starting at x equals zero. I'm going to be taking step sizes of 0.1 from there. So I need a column for my x values, a column for my y values, and a column now for my u values, my variables. So I have a column for each one of my variables. My initial conditions are given. At 0, y of 0 is 1, and u sub 0 is negative 1. That's the fact that y at 0 is, oh, I got those backwards, negative 1 and positive 1. Now, my x's in Euler's method just progress by a step size of h. So each time, I'm just going to take the previous value and add h to it. In Excel, I hit the F4 to put the dollar signs in there after I've selected B1. Or you just type dollar sign B, dollar sign 1. That's going to add 0.1. And then I can drag that down and go, you know, as far as I want it to. Say we go down to 2.2 or so. Hey, I'm a wizard. All kinds of those things. Excel wizard 2. Okay, now, Y in, from up here... The next value is you take the previous of that variable plus h times the function corresponding to that row. So notice what's going to happen is I'm going to take the previous value of y and add to it h times this right here, this function u. Okay? I'm going to draw on my screen here for just a second so you can see that. That my y sub n plus 1 will be the previous y plus h times. Now, what's my f? The f for the y function is just u. So u sub n. Okay, so when I type that in... That's going to be equal to the previous y plus h times the function corresponding with the y vector with x in, y in, u in plugged in. So I'm just going to hit the previous u right there. Hit enter. Then... My function for u is going to be equal to, it's the previous u plus h. Hit F4 to put the dollar sign. So it always uses h, that cell for b1, every time. Times, now, what's that function? Well, u sub n plus 1 is equal to the previous u plus h times the previous f. Now, whenever we derive this, that's the xn plus yn minus yn squared. That's the f at the previous point. The f that corresponds with u. So, then it looks like the previous x plus the previous y 
minus the previous y squared. Does that make sense? Yes. Now we're done. All we got to do here is... Like I'm going to go a little bit further even. I'm going to go down to maybe three. So h is point 0.1. Previous y plus h times its function, right? All right, so what does the solution look like? This is where I'm going to come in and just graph these. I'm going to highlight. I only want to plot the x's and y's. By the way, the u function is an approximation of the derivative, if you care to know that. If this happened to be modeling the position of a particle, then you actually have an estimate of the velocity by having converted it to a system. But I'm just going to graph this by highlighting all my numerical values for x and y. I'm going to go to Insert, and I'm going to choose the Scatter plot, don't choose the line plots. There's your approximation of the perf. What the solution to that differential equation looks like when it starts at negative one. Chart title. Chart title. Euler. Method, aka the awful approximation. Easy, but awful. We wanted to make it better. We'd do point oh one maybe, but then we'd have to go a lot further with these to get it to three. There we go. We got to change our data range. Yeah, I'll just do it this way. Uh, question: Is there a way to like make your step size smaller and still keep like your number of variables? Uh, not directly in the cells. You'd have to go into the VBA coding on the back end to do that. Which is doable, but... Uh, could you, I mean, could you adjust your formula so that it's technically using... Well, the problem is the number of cells is growing. So, not, I mean, you... you no. Can't think of a way to have an ever-growing number of formulas so that you always get to that last endpoint. I've gone down that road before and, and met with... No success. There's that curve. Very similar to what we just came up with. Okay? So now you have a technique where I could give you any differential equation. I give you this one. If I gave you the four necessary initial conditions, you could now take this system and approximate the solution y to this equation up here by just choosing a step size and basically using that same formula technique. All right, where it gets tricky is paying attention to some minor details like when you go into this formula right here, remembering to take the previous, only the previous value for that, function, for that variable, y, plus the h times now what you got to do is you got to plug in the previous row into the vector function component that goes with that y. 